morning, good evening, good afternoon, Fabulites. This is Angela at Be Fabulous You, and I have got questions for you. What opens with the babies, the triplets? One baby is up. And what closes with the babies, not babies anymore, 37 years old, and us learning that one baby is, is down down and that daddy said i learned with you triplets that when one is up the others might be down or you know you looking at one and something else you know what i'm trying to say <laughs> if you guess this is us last night's episode what's today thursday a couple nights ago episode then you're correct this is angela I told you already, the channel is Be Fabulous You. Thank you for clicking on the video and sticking around to see how we get from opening to closing. I think this is called number three. This is called number three. It's a mid-season finale. I didn't know it was, did you know? Did nobody tell me, did y'all ain't tell me it was mid-season finale? How's I supposed to know? But they don't come back till January. What is this, November? So we got December and half of November. We got a month and a half, a month. A month and a half before we see the triplets again, unless we watch them in reruns. Okay, so we got Baby Randall on the video. This is number three. We did a series, number one, number two, number three. Number one focused on Kev. Number two focused on Kate. And number three focuses on our boy Randall. Who is that? Ram who is this? My boy Stanley. Who are those? That's the couple. What's their name? Rambling? No, it's not Ram. Hey, Rambling Reviews. It's somebody else, though. Random. Random Reviews. I don't know. But y'all know Stanley. My boy Stanley. But anyway. Okay, so we got Rando as the focus. We, we, do you love Rando? I love Rando. I could just probably spend the whole time talking about all the different things that I really like about Rando, his family, the whole story unfolding. There, You know, there's so much that we don't know about these people. You know, we feel like we know them and we understand them, but every episode just brings up questions like, well, I didn't know that. How come I didn't? You my best friend. I didn't know Random. So we see baby Randall on the video. Mama Becca and Daddy Jack are filming. They're talking. He's up. He's walking. Number three. What did you just say? You can walk and talk? There you go, Randall. He was the number one to talk, but his nickname is number three. Three is my favorite number. Did you know that? See? At first, I was about to get offended. Like, why he got to be number three? Why the black one got to be number three? But see, three is a special number. Okay, so um, we got 37-year-old Randall unpacking a grocery bag in the kitchen. The girls are in the living room. Um, um, the TV is on, but they playing Pac-Man. That's his game, we find out during this episode. One more game before bed, the girls say. And Randall is like, um, why did the iPad go? Oh, well, he gives a joke. He's, you know, Randall is full of corny jokes. He's someone that we, I, someone that we, I love for his funny, his corny jokes. He's so corny, but he's so bold in it. He don't be shy with his corny jokes. He come right out with them. And he'd be smiling and happy to share them, too. So he said, why did the iPad go to the dentist? It had Bluetooth. <laughs> and the girls are like, and they gone upstairs. Okay, so then we see Randall. He coming upstairs. Um, as he's coming upstairs, he hears Deja reading her note cards about photosynthesis. Baby girl is preparing for a presentation that she's doing, I guess, tomorrow on photosynthesis she's practicing her presentation she's like it's so much work and rando is like um you know you got this plus thanksgiving is right around the corner and thanksgiving is so fun in our household we have lots of traditions it's wonderful yay i'm so excited um and then um you know how are the plants doing he talking about the plants and um baby girl um deja is like um the well the one listening to beyonce is bigger and then he's like you know more jokes randall's full of jokes hey they like lemonade more than water or some joke he make about beyonce and lemonade and water and you know <laughs> you 
you had to be there. It was kind of funny in a corny way. Okay, so then we find out that they um, worked on the project together, Randall and Deja. And Deja's like, the kids are going to make fun of me for working so hard on this. And Randall was like, well, the joke's on them. Hard work gets you big houses and a fancy car. Which, I kind of feel like that's propaganda. Although, I, I never, when I work with young people, I always want them to work hard. I guess not because it gets you big houses and fancy cars, but because that's the right thing to do. And we're quality people, and we do the right thing, and we work hard, and we're sincere. And hard work gives you... Um, a better brain hard work hard work gives you a better spirit hard work gives you better relationships with people hard work gives you better relationships with you and with God I mean meditation is a work it's a practice you know all of these things lead to a better quality you not necessarily on the material plane because I kind of feel like the material plane is rigged but I don't know but definitely on the spiritual emotional social plane you know being a hard working, solid stand up person, you can't, there's nothing better than that. Who do we love more than the hard working, solid stand up people in our lives and on our TV shows? Nobody. Okay. Um, so anyway, we um, we hear an argument. We hear some ruckus, some some arguing, and it's outside. And then we see Beth arguing with Shana. Shana, Shana, Shana is Deja's mama. And um, Shana, I mean, um, Beth is like, look, I'm going to ask you one last time to leave. You need to get out of here. Uh-uh, go. Bye. Uh -uh. And then Randall arrives on the scene. And Shana is like, they dropped the charges. And, um, Deja, come outside. Come outside. Deja! She trying to get the child's attention. And then um, Randall is like, what do you mean? And Shauna is like, I didn't do anything. See, that loops back around to, well, I'm, I'm out here and you in jail and I'm the stuff and you ain't nothing. Sir, Mr. Randall. Okay, she's like, I didn't do anything and I don't have to explain anything to you. And then a white male neighbor, I think his wife is behind him or a white woman is behind him, is like, uh, 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 Randall, um, are you guys okay? And Randall is like, yes. And then Beth is like, look, I'm calling Linda. And Shauna is like, you can call whoever you, the hell you want, but I'm leaving with my daughter. And then Deja comes out. She's like, she's like, mom, she comes, comes outside. And Shauna is like, DJ. Hey, tater tot. And then they hug. And I'm kind of like, how did the woman know where the people live? When your children are in foster care, did you, do they have to disclose? I was kind of surprised that she like showing up at their house. Like, because I don't know. It just seems like I don't, I mean, I know you have their child in your house, but I'm like, I don't want everybody knowing where I live. She not everybody because you have her child in your house. But I was kind of like, how she get their address? And then later on, vice versa, how he know where she lived. But I guess he got her file. Um, and then Sean is like, hey, they treating you okay? Um, they did this to your hair? And Deja's like, no, I did it. Mom, what are you doing here? And then um, Deja um, is Deja's like, I know, you know, you, you got free and everything. I, I hear what you're saying. Um, but you know, um, we gotta do it through the, the social worker. She's nice. So go home and wait until she calls you. Cause her mama's like, look, I've been calling that woman and she ain't calling me back. So I came to get you my daughter because I'm not in jail and I want my child. Um, and she's like, you know, Miss Linda will call you back. And Shauna is like, you sure? Like, you know, you okay? And, you know, Deja's like, yeah. And it was like Deja was talking her down. She was kind of like, you know, she, anyway, she had to talk her down. Her mom was like, you know, traumatized. Her mom is traumatized. Um, her mom is getting out of jail. I mean, I'm sure that ain't no soothing, calming environment. Um, and um, Shauna, Deja's like, yeah, I'm okay. And then Shauna's like... What would I do without my day, Jay? I'll be back. And then Beth is like, we'll be here. Like, you coming? Beth, she act like she like a low key. I don't know if gangster is the word, but I'm like, what's her story? Because she kind of, she, she ain't scared or she don't act like she's scared. She like, I'll be right here. When you come back, I'm going to be right here. Shauna, right here. You know where I live. 
Shauna, come on back here. Shauna, I got something for you. Shauna, that's how Beth kind of seemed. I'm kind of like, okay, Miss Beth. Um, and then Tess and um, and Annie are peeking out the door. Saying, and Randall is like, oh, okay, it's okay. Let's go inside. And then one of the baby girls is like, well, what, what's going on? Who was that? And Randall is like, oh, that was Deja's mom. She's only, she's just excited to say hi. And then we see the tan, teen Randall and he's working on college applications. So we're, we're back in the loop, you know, on all three, number one, number two, number three. Some of the scenes are loops of the same scene, but from different perspectives. So he, we see Stan. Stanford and Princeton and Howard H U and then the lights the, the fuse the lights go out the fuse goes out or whatever then we're back in the loop where um, the coach from Pitt is coming um, he, he's coming to see Kevin and then Randall goes by Jack at the fuse box or at the circuit breaker or whatever it's called it and um, you know his dad um, Jack is like Ivy League Harvard I just keep saying my kid is going to Harvard you know, um, and Randall is like, well, I'm not in yet. And then he's like, you know, I'm wondering if we could see a different school, Howard University. It's in D.C. That's where Keith goes. And I'm like, Keith, who is Keith? Randall got a black friend, a black life, a black consciousness, a black identity. <laughs> I was just saying to some, oh, to poetry, I was saying on her one on a review of her um thing, my twisted life with poetry or my twisted life TV with poetry. I was saying on her review that I, when when in last season when they met the black people at the pool and the black mama was like, you gotta shave the boy's hair, you gotta take him to a black barber, and you gotta give him lotion to put on his skin. See how I'm ashy? He gonna be ashy. Um, you know, black black people are different. And I was like, oh, he's gonna have some black people in his life. Then uh, we ain't seen no signs of them. So I thought, I'm like, who is Keith? I, how he got he? I was just shocked and pleasantly surprised and just so excited. Um, and Jack is like, sure, uh, we can take a ride and visit some weekend. And Randall is like, well, what about this Friday? Y'all know Randall ain't never been shy or hesitant. Randall is like, what about this Friday? And Jack is like, well, your brother's got a game Friday. And Randall is like, he's got a game every Friday. And then we find out later on that, because um, I'm like, why you got to go this Friday? That they only have the chores once a month. So it's either this Friday or he got to wait for it. So he's like, let us let us go. Let us proceed to Washington, D.C. so that I can go and visit Howard University. Because that's what, I'm Randall and I want what I want when I want it now. Okay. So then we see the show, social worker and she's with 37-year-old Randall and Beth. And um, she's like, you know, my husband has the flu and I was away from my phone. You know, I'm sorry you had to find out that, you know, Shauna was out of jail like this. Um, but, you know, the prosecutor um, and the PID dropped the charges. What's the PID? I don't know what that is. D oh, D DID? I don't know. Oh, the prosecutor did <laughs> drop the charges as DID as in the word did. Trying to read my writing or something. Licky, licky, so sweet. Um <clears throat> And she's like, you know, I went by Shauna's apartment and, you know, everything is good. The place is clean. She's already stocked the fridge. And, you know, there's a hearing this afternoon. And I'm going to recommend to the court that Shauna get custody of her daughter. And Randall is like, you got to be kidding. Um, I'm trying to keep an open mind. But she gets out. And the first thing she does is to storm over our house uninvited and make a scene and all in my wife and she's all up in my wife's face she freaks out my kids and then Deja has to talk her down like she's the kid but uh she's got food in the fridge so it's all good she had a gun in her car who's to say she's not gonna have a gun in her house soon um and then so anyway Randall, I, I don't, I'm not, I'm not with you on this one, bruh. Um, and then the social worker is like, um, you know, it's not my job to predict the future, um, but Shauna's doing good. Um, she's making inroads to get her job back. And Beth is like, Deja's hair was falling out from stress. 
she flinched every time my husband walked into the room and Linda is like um I need to remind you that this is what you signed up for you are foster parents you're foster parents you ain't adopt this child yes yes you're a foster parent you a support system when the parent can't be there okay and you need to be a support system when the parent is there try to forge a bond with Shauna. Y'all already got a bond with Deja. Clearly the mama needs some support. We all need support at different times. Help the child out through her, but respect her mama. Dang. Randall and Beth. Okay, so Random, Randall is like, we know what we signed up for, but we want um the, the woman we saw last night is not fit to take care of a child, and we are going to fight it. We reached out to our lawyer today, and Shauna trespassed. She threatened us. Surely that violates her parole. Send her back to jail. And Linda's like, uh, your lawyer, you are making a mistake here. And then Randall is like, you ever made a bad call? You ever returned a kid to a situation where they never should have been returned to? I gotta go. I take the kid girls to school and I make two stops from a house that's always clean and always has a full refrigerator. I'm done because I'm superior. Randall, cut it out. I know you and your feelings, sir, but just simmer down. Simmer down, simmer down, simmer down. Okay. So then we see um, Becca um, talking to teen Randall and she's um, like, I didn't know you were interested in Howard. And Randall is like, did you even know what Howard was? And Becca is like, well, I think it's great. You're figuring out who you are and what works best for you. And Randall is like, you know, to his father because they about to get on the road and because he not shy and he want what he want when he want it. Let's go. You know, I want to be on time. And Kate is like, um, you, you remember Kate saying this from before. Any college would be lucky to have you. You a math prodigy and perfect SAT scores. You ain't got to worry about rushing to get there. They rushing to get you, basically. And then Jack is like, okay, well, we'll see y'all after the game. And Randall is excited. He's jumping in the car, grinning, bouncing, buckling up for safety. He's like, let's go to Howard. It's you. He's all excited. Okay, so then we see um, baby Annie in the um, back seat. And, um, you know, she's like, is, is Deja going to have to go home? And Tessa's like, Annie, they already told you they don't know. Um, and um, we see Deja in the front seat. And then Randall is driving. And Randall is like, we're just trying to figure out what's best for Deja. That's all anyone wants. What's best for Deja? And then we see a bunch of white kids. I'm like, where are they at? And it's mostly all girls. And then this is Tess and Annie's school. And I was like, oh. And then we do see a black child. So I don't know if it was just that particular shot. But I'm like, okay. Um, and then Randall, as the girls get out of the car. Okay, little monsters, have a good day. And then Deja, as they drive off. Um, did Linda say when she was going to check on my mom to see if it's okay for me to um, go home? And Randall lies lies and he's like um i'm not sure you sure she checked she recommended that the child go home and the child want to go home she excited to see her mama she loved her mama i remember when i was dealing with children in foster care it was amazing to me and very educational to me that i'm like wow it doesn't matter what types of experiences many of these children have had with their mamas and their papas your mama you only got one mama and you only got one daddy and there's nobody like your mother and your daddy like nobody can replace your mother and your father and it's like a deep-seated it's like a real thing like you know you'd be like you want to go back to your mama and it's like yeah that's my mama and that's the only one I have um Okay, so we see Teen Randall and Jack walking um, onto Howard's campus and Randall is smiling and he's pausing and they go to the library and Keith comes up and then we hear the guy in the background. He says, the tour is going to start soon, but Keith is like, um, I'm going to take Randall on a private tour and his dad is like, uh, okay, let's go. And they like, uh, no dad's allowed or no white guy's allowed. We don't really know. And then Jack watches Randall walk off with three other young black guys and he just fit right in. He looked like he you know 
Um, and then we see Randall in the library and he's standing alone and he's observing and he's smiling. I realize he's still with the young guys he went off with, um, but he's getting a tour from them. He's looking at pictures in the display cases. Um, he's grinning. He's laughing. He's eating. He's seeing girls. He's back in the dorm room. And Randall was like, so there are no white students? And then one of the guys is like, you know, a few, some international students, the soccer team, you know, they joking. And then um, Randall is like, um, my entire high school is white. And then one guy says, me too. And then another guy says, me three. And then Keith is like, I felt the same way when I came here. Like Malcolm at Mecca. Like, you are not alone. And then Randall is like, it's weird, man. And then we see 37-year-old Randall. He's helping Deja get her science project stuff out of the trunk um, at her school. And he's like, I'll be back at 2.30 to watch. And Deja's like, uh, you don't have to come. No one come, shows up at these things and Randall is like we'll see you at 2 30 and then Beth answers the phone at work and she's like hey babe how she's doing how's she doing and Randall is like she's good all things con considered she still thinks we are waiting on Linda to give us the word and Beth is like I talked to our lawyer he thinks we have a case um can you he can squeeze us in at four so we can go over um together after Deja's presentation and I thought um and I thought last year was going to be our craziest Thanksgiving ever then we see 37 36 year old Randall this is last year and he's reading a note um with William and Becca there and it's like dear Randall sorry Sorry I had to leave. Wonderful to see you looking so well after all these years. And Randall is like, after all these years, and then Randall and Will, and then we see Randall and William, because see, at that point, Randall thought he was just finding his father. He didn't know there had been an established relationship. Okay, so then we see Randall and William, and Randall is like, you know, I'm not quite ready for small talk. Um, how many times did you and my mother meet? And William is like, just twice. She came right after you were born to make sure I wasn't going to come after you. And then again, um, when you were nine or so and you were asking where you came from she was also struggling she was struggling with whether to tell you about me or to keep you from me and I was clean then and had a good job and I got so excited maybe too excited and I came on too strong and that scared Rebecca away and I was shocked and disappointed when she disappeared like that and she left and I followed her in a cab and I only had twenty dollars and I kept hoping that I had enough to get to you and I had enough and I made it and I imagined walking into the door and knocking and explaining that I was was not a threat and I just wanted to be a part of your life um however they would allow like not every day but maybe part of big stuff like Christmas and graduations and birthdays but then I saw your bikes on the front lawn number one number two and number three and probably I was was like one of those was your nickname and I realized I didn't even know you your nickname you had a whole life that, that I wasn't a part of and I had nothing it had nothing to do with me and um it was over for me just like that who was I to insert myself into your life against your mother's wishes and then they both lean back in the same way and at the same time and I'm like you were his father like the only father he had his birth father um, and then we see 37 year old Randall in the car he's driving away then we see Jack walking up to Randall with the three gag Oh, with the three guys. This is on Coward's campus. He's like, hey, bud. And the guys are just looking. And I don't know why Keith didn't say, hi, Mr. Pearson or whatever. But um, Randall says, oh, this is my dad. And Jack is like, uh, we got to go. We got to get ahead of track. Um, traffic and uh, Randall's like already then they drive him back and Randall is all excited he's like Howard had this Howard that da -da, da -da 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 -da. and Jack is not so much excited he's like it's uh great but uh it's now it's no Harvard um but you'll make the best decision Randall you always do um you hesitated to introduce me to those kids and I understand um what it must be like those people don't know you or us and randall was like uh, i hesitated not because you were white but because you're old ha 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 but dad you know how you felt at howard when you thought that i hesitated because you were white well um how you were kind of mad but you understood too i feel that way all the time ever since i was little not from you guys but from everyone else i just feel like i'm always going to feel this way not just not bad just off balance like everything is going to be a bit more complicated for me me. and Jack is like um let me make let's make one one stop I want to show you something and then we see Randall um doing um 
a Shauna. He's on the stoop. He's pulled up, you know, at Shauna's place. And he in the car watching. And um, she's showing off clothes to her friends and smiling. And she all happy. Um, and then we see Jack and Randall at the Vietnam Memorial. And Jack is telling, I guess, Randall about Jack's brother. And then Randall puts his hand on Jack's shoulder. Then Jack puts his hand on the name, on his brother's name in the memorial. Then they're still in D.C. with the obelisk, um, you know, you know, sitting on a bench. We see the obelisk. That's how we know they're in D.C and um he's like um you know um he was 25 when he went to vietnam the draft was on tv our life changed i don't talk about it even to your mom your mom doesn't know what i saw and what i did it's too hard um for all of us over there when i got back i i was off balance i was out of place all the time everywhere you're gonna find your balance randall then you'll lose it. Then you'll find it again. It's the ride. It's life. Um, you know, we'll make a lot. You'll make a lot of choices, and I probably won't be around for many of them. But choices you will make will be spectacular because you're spectacular. Own it. Run with it. And then this beeper goes off, and it's like your sister. Something's wrong. Let's go find the phone. We see 37-year-old Randall, and he's walking up on a waiting Beth, and she smiles, and they kiss. And um, Randall is like, I don't think we can keep Deja from her mother. And Beth is like, I've been unsure too. And Randall is like, I went to Shauna's um, house I, and, um, and I saw her neighborhood and her world. And I saw her come home with a bunch of new purple clothes and um, for Deja. And Beth is like, I didn't know purple was her favorite color, Deja's favorite color. Or the Deja had cool nickname names like Tater Top and Deja. And Randall is like, she had this whole world before we came. Um, you know, Pac-Man is my obsession, <laughs> lifelong, you know, I got the girls into it, but the game hasn't changed all these years, life feels like Pac-Man, it's the same game, it's the same board, and the same ghost, and then Beth is like, um, I'm gonna miss her, and Randall is like, me too, and then we hear Deja introducing her product, and pro her project, and we see Beth and Randall, you know, standing in the background, and there's other adults there, are they teachers, or are they parents too, and then, um, Deja is like, you know, my foster dad helped me with that and at some point he had said something about foster dad she's like that's dumb don't say that or whatever so you know she's like my foster dad like now she's starting to get sentimental because she's excited about going home and also she who, who couldn't like randall everybody like randall and then 37 year old randall and he's answering the phone he like hey kev you know now's not a good time and then kev is like i'm on my way to your house i got into town early for thanksgiving and randall's like uh okay hey hey man i gotta go i'll see you later then the doorbell rings and it's linda and Linda's like she's right outside and then Randall brings Shauna um, Deja's bag and he's like she's getting the rest of her things together and Shauna doesn't really have a response and then Randall is like well uh, if you ever need any help with her yay Randall and then um you know, someone to watch her or, or pick her up after school or, or um, you know, even with homework. I'm good with math and science. I think she is too. And Sean is like, uh, we live all the way in Newark. And Randall is like, it, um, it's okay. I'll bring the girls. And Sean is like, I think we're good. Um, you know, but I appreciate you taking care of her. She don't really like him. He been insulting her all along. He ain't tried to build no bond with her, but she does know he ain't dog her child out and he likes the child. She, you know, it's kind of like a heart. But anyway, they trying. He trying. I know he doing the best he can. And then, um, you know, inside we see Deja come downstairs and Tess and Annie hug her. And Annie gives Deja a drawing. And then the paperwork is signed and Tess and Annie hug and they're crying. Oh, Deja's leaving. <laughs> And then Deja goes outside and Shauna holds her arms open and um, DJ, DJ smiles and um, Deja smiles and hugs her mom. And Deja's like, uh, thank you, Beth. And then they hug and then Deja and Randall say goodbye. And then, um, you know, she's like, remember when we first met and um, you said you were a kid who you always felt split inside? Well, I don't want you to think that just because I want to go home that I don't like, you know, living here. And Randall is like, I know, I know. You don't have to worry about about that and Deja's like I know my mom does do some stupid stuff but she's really cool she's a good person and then Randall's like well I know you don't like me hugging you and she's like it's just when I don't see it coming and then they hug and then he's crying and I'm crying and but Beth ain't really crying and then we see Randall washing the dishes and Beth may unmaking Deja's bed then we see um Becca at Kate's door with her arms hope open and they hug this is after the um the you know the miscarriage so randall just lost the baby beth 
um, Beth. Uh, Kate just lost a baby. Um, Kev is crying outside of the doctor's house. And, um, you know, oh, please give me my father's uh, necklace. It's the only thing I have. I need help. Help me. Remember all of that. Then we see Randall getting the call from Becca. Hey, ma. Oh, my God. That's him finding out that um, his sister Kate had had a miscarriage. Then we see Kevin showing up at Randall's and Kev wanting to ask for help. Um, hearing, um, you know, hearing of Beth's miscarriage. You know. <laughs> Kevin shows up at the door and he wants to ask of help for help but then he hears of Beth's miscarriage and then he's leaving and Tess is behind has gotten in the car with him because she just wants to spend time with him he drinking vodka and orange juice so he on the road right rolling and then Kevin pops her head up and we discover that she's in the back of the car he discovered at the same time her father is looking for her at home um Tess 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 where's Tess he looking for her in the neighborhood then his wife is on the phone when he comes back in he like she not in the neighborhood his wife is like she with uh Kevin Kevin got arrested for DUI and then Kevin meanwhile has discovered Tess he, she's like hey Uncle Kev slow down he's like what in the world put on your seatbelt even through his drunkness you know and then he's um then Randall spoke with Kate and they are all gonna try again with kids you know he gonna try again with foster kids and she gonna try again even though she had a heartbreak even though they have had their hearts broken they still have room and space to love um and then he you know Kevin I mean um Randall was talking to his wife he's like well if we foster again maybe it'll be a boy and then we see a little boy in Essex County and they like we gonna find a child for we gonna find a home for you soon and and um, is that Randall and Kate's next foster child? And it's the social worker Tess. I was like, is this a projection in the future? It, what, what a guan, what a guan, what a guan. And then we see um, teen Randall and Jack at the hospital with Kevin's football injury. You know, we looping back to that. And then the father, Jack, is like, you know, your brother's going to be okay. You know, with the three of you, you know, it's always a blind spot, you know, since you were babies when one falls down the others are standing up and we watching one duh, duh, duh. and that's the end of the episode i can't believe i talked about it for a whole half hour we're gonna have to wait so long to see um this is us thank you for watching i'm angela again the channel is be fabulous you we're working still on 200 subscribers so if you part of the work yay you we love you be you be fabulous be fabulous you today is the best day ever be you be fabulous. See?